Church of Washington Hills, the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, September the 4th, 2022. And today we begin the fall quarter, which is titled Learning to Honor God. And we'll start with Unit 1, beginning with obediency. Our lesson for today is obedience and leadership, which is coming from Exodus, the third chapter, and one through the twelfth verse. And the golden text read, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Exodus 3 and the tenth verse. Let us pray. O gracious and almighty God, it's again that we call on your holy in your righteous name. We call upon you realizing that we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for our early rising this morning. When our eyes came open, we was able to behold a brand new day. And we thank you for just starting us on another day's journey. Well, Heavenly Master, we thank you for what you have provided us with, Father. And we thank you, Father, for enclosing us in our right mind. Give us a mind to want to Learn more about you. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you would continue to bless us, Father. Continue to lead and guide us in a way be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Heavenly Master, we call upon you, Father. We pray for the sick all over the land. We ask that you would comfort families who have lost a loved one. Their heads are bowed down in sorrow. And we pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. Touch them before it ever lasts and too late. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you build us up where we might be torn down and just prop us on every leaning side. Oh, Heavenly Master, we call upon you, Father, just open our hearts and our mind that we'll be receptive to your holy word. We'll be careful to give you the praise for you is worthy. We ask that you bless it all, bless it in the dollar name of Jesus. Amen. Our devotional reading is coming out of the book of Joshua, the first chapter and first through the ninth verse. Let's start with the first verse. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. It replies that the sole of your foot should thread upon, that have I given unto you, as I have said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto thy father to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest profit wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In the last verse, number nine, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord our God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Amen. Our lesson of obedience and leadership, the lesson outline is Number one, burning bush, which comes from Exodus 3, 1 through the third verse. And then the second is holy ground, 
Exodus 3, 4 through the 6 verse. And then the third is Israel cry, Exodus 3, the 7 through the 12th verse. This lesson starts the fall quarter title, Learning to Honor God. Our Lord is the worthiest of all who deserve honor. We honor God by giving him the reverence, admiration, praise, and obedience that are due him. We honor him when we obey his commands. We show that we have a close relationship with him. We obey him because we love him and are grateful for all he has done for us. The first unit of this quarter is titled Beginning with Obedience. Whereas this lesson is about God's calling Moses to lead the people of Israel to freedom from slavery in Egypt. The task would prove to be difficult, but God's promises promise to be with Moses throughout all that journey to the promised land. God use, uses people in a variety of ways to achieve his purposes. Whereas Moses was selected by the Lord to deliver Israel from slavery, but also to bring her to the abundant benefits of the promised land. Moses was an important man in Egypt in his younger days, but it was only after he learned that he was nothing was when God was able to use him. Our first outline, Burning Bush, which is the first through the third verse. Number one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Haran. For the last 40 years of his life, Moses has been occupied as a shepherd in the desert. Prior to his 40 years of shepherding, Moses has spent his first 40 years in the courts of Pharaoh of Egypt. Moses was raised as an Egyptian, was raised in an Egyptian palace, but now he is tending to the sheep of his father-in-law in the land of Midian and has an exile from Egypt and his former life. Moses' occupation during his years of living in the desert for 40 years was caring for the flock of his father-in-law, Jephthah, the priest of Midian. Moses was tending to the sheep on the backside of the desert, the mountain of God, called Mount Haran, which later was also called Mount Sinai. In tending to the flock of Jethro, Moses learned a valuable lesson about leading God's people. No matter how menial or insignificant, all the events of our life are within God's potential purpose. Falls. And number two, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses was tending the flock of his father in law when, without any particular warning, Moses sees the angel of the Lord in the flame of fire in the midst of a burning bush. A burning bush is not in itself unique, but this bush burned without being consumed. The devils are abounded with bushes that are dry and brittle, whereas a single spark could ignite a fire that could spread far and wide. But this fire was confirmed to a one bush only which was not being devoured. The bush had flame coming from it without the bush actually burning up. Moses clearly perceived that the bush was on fire but was not being consumed by the flame. Number three, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burned. The bush was burning, was, but was not being consumed, was a sight that draws Moses' attention. It drew him in for a closer observation, whereas he said that I would turn aside and see this great sight to find out 
why the bush was not being consumed. Most of curiosity was aroused by what he saw. He had to investigate why the bush was not consumed. God sometimes used unique means and circumstances to get our attention focused on him. And that in, in our first outline, burning bush, and our second outline is holy ground, which is the fourth through the sixth verse. Number four, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. God did not speak to Moses until he had Moses' attention. God waited until Moses turned aside to see before speaking to him. The burning bush was a spectacular phenomenon that captured Moses' attention, but it changed nothing until Moses received the word of God that came to him there. God called Moses by name from out of the burning bush. This strange sight that Moses saw was a special revelation from God, whereas the burning bush was not just a meaningless novelty produced by God. God's voice came from the bush, clearly indicating the divine nature of the fire. The name Moses is repeated twice for emphasis, which imply important and urgency. Moses acknowledged he was listening and heard God's voice and replied by saying, Here am I. Moses answered in faith, for he had no doubt about who had called out to him and how he should answer. The number five, and he said, Draw not thy hill, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thy standest is holy ground. The Lord instructed Moses to keep a distance and to remove his shoes as a sign of reverence for the holy place on which he stood. Both commands relate to the holiness of the location where Moses was standing. This was holy ground, a holy place because God is holy. The desert ground on which Moses stood was not holy by nature. It was holy ground during those special moments because God was present. Removing the sandals show a appropriate humil humility which recognized the immediate presence of God. By removing his sandals, Moses acknowledged his unworthiness to stand in the presence of a holy God. God's holiness can be associated with a particular land, a location, the sanctuary, the temple, or even the items associated with people of the temple. The source of this holiness is not the object, the location of the substance itself, but God. In the New Testament, those who believe in Jesus as Lord become holy and are called to live as the priesthood of believer in holiness to God. Christians shall always enter into God's presence to pray and to worship with reverence and respect for his holiness. And in the last verse of this outline, number six, moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid, afraid to look upon God. God revealed himself to Moses by declaring his relationship to the patriarch as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God called himself the God of your father. This not only established his identity, but we affirm God's intent to fulfill his covenant to his people. Moses responded by hiding his faith because he was afraid to look at God. At the sight and the sound of the Lord, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look farther at God's specific revelation to him for he feared for his life. Moses' life was saved for God appeared to him for a special purpose 
that would benefit his people. God wanted Moses and Israel to know his compassionate care for them. The ground was holy and God was there with Moses and this was the first written occurrence of God directly speaking with someone over the prior 400 years of Israel history. This holy ground would become the location of the calling of Israel's greatest leader as well as the place he would later return with the people of Israel. And that in our second outline, holy ground, and our last outline, Israel cry, which is the seven through the twelfth verse. Number seven, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard thy cry by reason of thy taskmaster, for I know their sorrow. The Lord tell Moses that he had seen the affliction and heard the cry of the Israelites because of the cruelty and harshness of the Egyptian taskmasters. The Israelites had grown so numerous that their presence became a threat to the Egyptians. So they began to oppress and enslave God's people. When we encounter unjust suffering, remember that it is cool. It's an occasion for God to be glorified. The Lord informed Moses that he was well aware of the terrible condition and sorrows and affliction of his people, the Israelites. The Lord had seen their horrible existence and had heard their cry to him for mercy and rescue. He had heard their cry and would deliver them from the Egyptians. God knew all about the suffering as well as the future of his people. And number eight, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Havites and the Jebusites. The reason for the Lord's appearance to Moses was that he had come down to deliver Israel from the Egyptians. God had come down was a way of referring to his intervention in history. This is a statement invoking the image of a powerful king coming to offer his throne in order to exert his power. Israel's sojourn in a foreign land which turned out to be Egypt had been foretold several centuries before to Abraham. And now it was time for Israel to return home. God was to bring them to a new land, the land of Canaan, the same land that he promised to the patriarch some 400 years earlier. This was a good land, good Lord's land that was flowing with milk and honey, which meant that the land was a rich pasture land. However, it was occupied by the nations of the Canaanites the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. But these nations was no problem for the Lord to remove. God will remove these strong nations who are condemned for worshiping other gods and living immorally to provide a land for his people to live holy before him. Number nine, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. God again told Moses that he had heard the cry and seen the oppression of his people in the land of Egypt. God knows all about our circumstances and cares about our suffering as well. However, God knows the destiny of his people. The phrase Translated as oppression, with which the Egyptians oppressed them, emphasized the severity of Egyptian treatment of the Israelites. And number 10, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God, he used Christians to accomplish his purposes in ways far beyond our own imagination. The Lord now challenged Moses with his plan, 
where he would lead the Israelites through a transition from oppression to prosperity. He intended to send Moses to Pharaoh in Egypt so that the Israelites might be free from the Egyptian captivity. The law was going to use Moses to deliver his people from that wretched and degrading slavery, whereas Moses would appear before Pharaoh and facilitate Israel migration from Egypt to the land of promise. The number 11, and Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses objected object, immediately to the Lord's directive. Moses protest, protected protect, protested God sending him to Pharaoh, citing his own shortcoming. Moses felt he was not good enough or great enough for the role of delivering of his people. His reason for not wanting the assignment was his perception of his own lack of ability. Moses declared, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. The mission was overwhelming to Moses. Therefore, he responded to God's call with doubt. He does not see himself as the best person or appropriate leader to free the Israelites from Egypt. Therefore, he felt that he was not up to such a task. In our last verse, number 12, and he said, Certainly, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. In response to Moses' objection, God promised him two things. First, the Lord promised to personally be with Moses, assuring him of his presence. Moses was not going to bring about this great exodus in his own strength. God replied is intended to take to Moses to take the focus off of himself and on where he should be, which was God. And secondly, God says to Moses, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain, which is a promise to Moses that he was successfully return with God's people to the very mountain where he is standing. In Mount Horan, God, Moses, and the Israelites would worship the Lord, whereas Moses would be a successful deliverer of Israel, for that was God's will. God promised to see him through it, and God keep his word. After hearing from God, Moses had no right to protest father. However, his objection moved from a godly lack of self-reliance to an ungodly lack of faith. Both promises, ears for liberation and their return to this location will be fulfilled later in the book of Exodus. God will certainly be with Moses when he returned to Egypt whereas many plagues will take place through Moses' prophetic announcements, which will be signs from God that his, 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 his divine judgment coming down upon the Egyptians. Moses met often with God. His power with people came solely from the glow of God on his face. People reverence not the man Moses, but the God in Moses, which is always God's plan. It is not required that a spiritual leader be a charismatic individual or that he be skilled in the ways of the world. But what is essential is that he be in constant contact with the source of all spiritual power who provides wisdom and strength. If there is one lesson we learn from the life of Moses, a person cannot possibly be a leader in spiritual things unless he first have a relationship with God. Amen. This end our lesson for today. And on next Sunday, September 11th, 
our lesson is obedient to remember, which is coming from Exodus, the 12th chapter, 1 through the 14th verse. And the devotion reading is coming from Ezra, 6th chapter, the 19th through the 22nd verse. And our virtual telecast Sunday school lesson is available at 8 o'clock a.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook and YouTube page. And our sanctuary Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Our sanctuary Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. It broadcasts live on Facebook on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Our Wednesday night Bible study is live on Facebook at 6 o'clock p.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Both broadcasts are available late on YouTube on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill channel. And today we will be serving Holy Communion service during our 10.30 morning worship service. Do this in remembrance of me, Holy Communion service. And we praise him and thanking God for a wonderful celebration of the Urshers on last Sunday. Have a safe and happy Labor Day. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and our dear Heavenly Father, it's again that we call on your holy name, Father. We call upon you, realizing that you have given us so much to be thankful for. We thank you for life as well with us as it is. We thank you for blessings with a portion of our health and strength. We thank you for enclosing us in our right mind. Oh, Heavenly Master, you have been so good to us. You woke us up right early this morning and start us on another day's journey. And we thank you, Father, for just all what you have done for us, for you brought us from a mighty long way. You have opened doors, and you have made ways out of no way. You have kept us through danger seen and danger unseen. Oh, Heavenly Master, we realize that if we had a thousand tongues, we still wouldn't have enough to give you the praise, so you is worthy of all our praise. We just magnify your name. For your name stands above all other names, Father. There is power in your name, Father. And we thank you for being a good and loving God. One that cares about us. One that provides for us everything that we need. Now, Heavenly Master, we continue to pray for the sick, the bereavement family, and lost soul, Father. Now, strengthen us where we may be weak. Give us more determination to run this race that is set before us. And when this life journey can't afford us a home any longer, and we too, like so many others, must quit this old busy walk of life, we're not worried, for we know we're going to a better place, a home that's not made by man. Over yonder, our weary soul will be at rest, and we can serve thee forevermore. This is our prayer. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to thank you once again for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. And we want to bid you to have a good rest of the day. And until we meet again on next Sunday, we bid you to have a good rest of the week. And have a safe and happy Labor Day. May the Lord continue to keep you in his love and care.